two, level up with Winnie Sun. Well, happy Wednesday! It's so great to have you here. If you're joining us on the replay, let me know by commenting the word "replay" so I can catch your view. And if you're joining us live, welcome to the show. The market closed down again today. Unfortunately, a continuation. From yesterday's pullback, the Dow closed down 345 points. Nasdaq down also 97. S&P to take it down also down 41 points. Because, my friends, winter is certainly coming. And this Thanksgiving, as COVID-19 cases continue to climb across the United States, more states and cities are closing non-essential businesses. In fact, my two guests that are coming on, we were just discussing this right before we went live here, limiting public and private gatherings and imposing mask mandates as we try to help slow down the spread as we go into the winter season. You know, it's it's dire. It's not a good thing. We've actually heard in, in New York City, in fact, they're saying that 50% of the restaurants won't be coming back. And I certainly hope that not to be true. However, there is some good news coming. And I hope that you find this to be the case because Pfizer today announced that it's going to be submitting an application with the FDA for an emergency use allowance after their final data analysis also found that their vaccine is 95% effective in preventing COVID-19. And as you remember, Moderna uh, announced on Monday, just Monday of this week, that their vaccine is also 94.5% effective. Close enough, right? Close enough. And on to even better news because you know what? The holidays are upon us. And today's Winnie Sun Tweet Chat celebrated friendship. And our very special community as tweeps across the globe joined us in our Friendsgiving Twitter celebration. Now, I don't remember if we did this last year, but I love, I love, love, love this chat. You know, we, I came up with this concept about a year ago of doing something called um, like Tribe Throwdown is where members and people who come to our tweet chat, uh, they actually get to share their questions and we get to answer them. And we thought, how fun would it be to actually combine Thanksgiving and friends and throw down together in one very special chat. And so today's discussion was less was led by three of our tweets. Uh, Beth Stabo from Arizona, Shaval John, who joins us from Houston, Texas. And of course, you know our very own Suzanne Brown, also from Texas. And I, you've had a chance to meet her on the show several times. But today, we'd love to recap some of the discussion and millions of impressions that were spread today on Twitter from our tweet chat. So joining us live, let me tell you, I'm really excited because these are two friends of mine that I've been wanting to have on the show for a really long time. It's like you talk to each other on Twitter, but it's one thing to talk to each other on Twitter and another thing to actually see each other in person. So joining us live today, my friends, are Bernie and Chevelle. How are you both? Start with Hello, Winnie. I'm doing great. How's everyone doing? Well, we're doing great now that you're here. And um, tell us. First off, I got I just got to mention Shiva, you're looking amazing, okay? For someone who's in COVID, um who is, you know, we, we don't have a lot of activity. I got to say the last time I saw um you on video, you look great before. You look even better now. Um healthier, exercise, what's going on, my friend? Well, uh everything's going good. I'm, st I'm still doing the same routine, home workouts as usual. Uh, you know, with my coach, uh, which I give her a shout out, Monique uh, Cabell. Uh, well, Monique Rondell now. Uh, she's <laughs> married. But, um, but yeah, everything's going good, doing the same thing. And actually being inspired by people on Instagram, fitness people, who Amazing. are doing doing the same thing. What can I tell you, my friend? You look like 10 years younger. I'm sure people have told you that. So, <laughs> you know, not like you could have looked even younger before. But let's, I mean, let's bring it here. You know, Bernie, let's talk about this. Thanksgiving, kids, what's it look like at your home? Well, um, as we talked about earlier today, I got my text notification that they're shutting down bars and restaurants from the 20th of November through the 13th. So for us, it's looking, you know, a little bit smaller at home, um, immediate family, meaning wife, two kids. That's probably about it. Got older, older parents that we want to, you know, protect and um, ensure that they're safe and healthy. My dad's going to have a pacemaker put in, I think December 15th. So, you know, his health is the utmost, re, you know, concern for us. And, 
you know, really just doing our part to ensure that, you know, we're staying safe and healthy, but so are the people that, that are around us. So it's going to be, you know, a little different, a lot different, much more intimate, but, you know, as the last eight months have taught us, you know, the ability to, you know, have these times, to cherish these times, to be with our immediate family, um, kids, daughters, they grow up so fast. And, you know, just to, you know, the thing that I do pull from this is having that ability to spend a lot more time with them, sitting down, having, having family dinners. You know, those are the things that, you know, really are a positive coming out of the experiences that we've all gone through here lately. Yes, I can, I can certainly relate to that, Bernie. And, you know, um, our thoughts are with your family, certainly. And I know it's a really difficult time because many of us have parents that are getting older, right? And then we have to, like you said, that have medical concerns that are really pressing. So so thank you for being here with us and sharing this. And I, I gotta say also, I wanna say a quick shout out because a lot of our friends are joining us today. We see Carlos is here with us. Um, Jim from Chicago is with us. The one and only John Lim, but you all know and love is with yes. us as well. It's so great to have all of you join us on this discussion. And you know, let's jump into it because if those of you who haven't been on a tweet chat before, one of the things that people always say like, well, what's a tweet chat? A tweet chat is the coming together of friends and people with a, a common bond um, all over the globe. And I people always try to ask me how to explain our tweet chat. And first off, like if, if we're talking just statistics and numbers, so we are the largest business tweet chat on social media today. So we average about 150 million impressions per week. Yeah, Chabal's even surprised. We are that big. Um, and we talk about all sorts of topics, business topics, entrepreneur topics, social media, life topics, and certainly a good dose of personal finance and, and financial topics as well. Um, but what, what I always think is that one thing, that, how I would describe our tweet chat is really the coming together of some of the nicest people on social media. These two gentlemen, if you don't know them already, I was giving you eyebrow. I'm loving this. <laughs> it's a whole experience. Um, if you don't follow them already, you really ought to. Um, let's, let's just take a quick pause. Shiva, how can people follow you? Well, we're gonna, they can follow me on Twitter at uh, ChevD80 and on Instagram at uh, Cheval John, as you can see on there. And then then also they could visit my uh, business website at www.volanomedia.com, as you see on there. Thank you. And, um, and also on LinkedIn at Cheval John. I love it. That makes it really easy. Well, Bernie, how do we follow you? Yes, um, pretty easy to follow me. You can follow me on Twitter at B, the number two, the seven. Um, LinkedIn, um, put in Bernie Fiesenegger, and I'll be there. And my personal website, um, B to the seven dot com. I love that. Thank you. Thank you both for doing that. All right, let's jump into some of our questions because we got some great answers today. But more importantly, I'd love for you to expand on this. You know, let's start with question two, if we could here. And that is, what have you learned to let go of during the pandemic? What life changes have you made for the better during lockdown COVID? Um, and let me, let me say this. For those of you who are watching and maybe on replay, uh, if you want to, you can actually jump on Twitter as well and respond to this question. Just make sure you add hashtag Winnie Sun so we can see your answer um, because you can continue to um, join in the conversation. It doesn't stop when the tweet chat ends. That's what we've learned for sure. Um, Bernie's answer actually was picked here and it was the, the pandemic has taught me what really matters and what doesn't. Uh, there really is so much you don't need in life that are just distractions of what is really important, family, friends, and being together. Bernie, um, I think that's something we can all relate to, but maybe you could share with you, share with us, you know, some of the silver linings, you mentioned one of them before, but has there been something even um, more surprising during this process for you? Yeah, I would, I mean, from just the brand perspective and how, we now engage with brands, how our expectations have changed. I think, you know, from that, that perspective, but also the way my kids have adapted to technology, to, you know, staying in contact with their friends and even our family through, whether it's games, um, you know, on the PlayStation, whether it's, you know, games that they have within, within their phone or, you know, FaceTiming, you know, I've been really impressed. I've got a 16 year old and 11 year old, but the ability, for them to stay connected and how they use technology to keep up with their friends, to keep up with their school 
and the way that really I'm learning from them day by day of, you know, what it is that they're using and the tools that they're using and even the feedback that they give me. So I think, you know, with a lot of this, it's, you know, open communication with our family, um, having more time together, um, spending more time together. Before COVID, it was a lot of sports activities running here, running there, and not, not a whole lot of time for, for family and sitting down together at the dinner table and asking, you know, what is the best part of your day or what was the part that you didn't like? And those are things that I think are very important that have really come back into the um, family fabric within the last eight, eight months. Absolutely. I would agree with that too. I mean, Shiva, you're in the hospitality industry and you're also in the social media digital uh, industries as well. Um, how has this process changed what your day looks like and maybe maybe has it changed your perspective as well, Cheval? I it really hasn't changed my perspective a lot. Uh you know I've I've actually it's actually has been the same for me, you know, managing my time better. But what has really what has changed is seeing how people have have found a way to to keep in keep in keep healthy really. Like for example, like mm -hmm. I've seen many on on Instagram, uh, doing you know, doing home workouts, and they are they keep they find a way to keep in shape, and you know to be able to be able to fight uh, any type of uh, diseases that's happening at, at this moment, and it's and it's really inspiring to me to see that you know like one one lady I'm going to mention uh, she's here in Houston, I I think it, her name is Edith I I forgot her last name but. Anyway, she basically did home workouts and she did a fitness competition and she won her pro card. And that was really amazing to see. So it's one of those things where where people find a way to get things done, even if the gyms are co closed. So that's that's what's really that's what's really has changed changed yeah. uh, with this. That's great. Well, that and that's great. I think it's very inspiring to hear how you've been able to maintain uh, health and if not get healthier during this time. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm definitely not in that degree. I think I was certainly healthier before we went into COVID because, you know, I'm just not going and moving as much as I want. I'm trying to. I'm getting there. You're inspiring me, Cheval. So this is great. Um, Let's go to question seven. So, Cheval, this is actually a question that you came up with that we really want to highlight. And that is, why should people be as transparent as possible? How do you make sure you're being transparent and authentic? And our, our buddy John Lim, who's also here with us live said, it's more important now that so many of our conversations and connections are virtual. It starts with saying that what you mean and meaning what you say. So I'm gonna start with you, like your question, your answer. What, what are your thoughts on this? Sorry, uh, everything it went down here. Um, anyway, uh, for me, it's it's important to be as transparent as possible because you know people want to, like especially now they 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 want to know who's going to be for them. Like if you're if you're out there uh, doing doing great work, and you want people to trust you, you have to at least show them what's going on, because mm -hmm. if, because in the in the era of secrecy, the truth's going to come out anyway. And I think really if you know if you're if you're doing like if you're like sharing like some like being as transparent as possible like sharing how's your day going especially during this time people will be able to relate more to what you to what you're going through and they can even help you and support you and i've and i know like like you know like some companies have been doing that and they are like you know they're doing that like in the in the fitness competition I'll go back to that again uh you know they i've seen i've gotten to know more know them more better now because they they're they're like regular human beings like all of us, but they they basically go the extra mile to make sure that they are they are uh, fit and they are actually work. You know, they are inspiring others to to be great. So I think that's real. That's why it's important, and especially especially on social media, you got to at least you have to at least tell tell people what's going on to a degree, but not share everything. 
Exactly. I love that. I think it's very, it's very true. It's, it's so important on social media to share. But like you mentioned, we, you have the control in, in allowing how much we want to share and what we don't want to uh, share. And it's important to be authentic and transparent, especially those so many people out there that care about you, you know, not just on social media, but also in your, your personal life, in your personal world. Like we need to share. I, I feel like during this time, um, it's it's highlighted the importance of letting how we feel out because um, there's been a lot of talk right Bernie in terms of mental health and mental struggles and like you said our kids are you know at home and going to school which is not an easy thing for a kid right and definitely not an easy thing for a teenager and Bernie even like yourself and myself who we traditionally would go out uh, outside to work that's been a challenge too right how how has transparency played more of a role for you, Bernie? So with, um, definitely with transparency, you know, that is a, an element of pillar for building trust, um, for furthering those relationships, um, being your, you know, yourself. And yes, you absolutely do control what that transparency is, but I think it's important for you to be human, um, to show that respect for others so that when they see you, whether it's online and more importantly in real life, that you're the same person that you, you know, really have said who you are in, in the digital world and the social world. And as a brand, it's really important to be transparent to, you you know, the audiences and the consumers of, you know, who you stand for, what you are. And words are one thing, but it really is actions and, you know, how you act and how you portray that transparency that's really important of portraying and building trust, loyalty, even brand loyalty and building relationships, you know, more than just something that's online, but it's, you know, the actions that you take along the way. I, I love that, Bernie. It's so true. It's the actions that you, you put along the way. The actions are so important, actions above words. And during this time, I think it's more so highlighted, right? It's really yes. easy for us to get a point where we're sort of overwhelmed or feeling like, you know, our life is so sad and so difficult. And yet so many others are going through that. Um, and, and I think, I think it's important right now that we're honest with ourselves and our communities, right? Not every day is peachy, not every day is great, and that's okay. That, and it's that, also, okay. Mm -hmm. and it's also, you know, listening and reaching out to your friends, your family, asking them how they are. And, you know, it's not about me, it's about we, but, you know, having that ability to listen and let them vent and talk about what's bothering them as well, I think is also very important during this time and really to give them that ability to express their feelings. So, you know, that's another part that I think is very important with this. So Bernie, have you, um, have you tried this? Have you done this actively? And if so, maybe you could give us some tips as we go into the holidays. What's one way that you think would be a good way to bridge this conversation? Um, I think reaching out, I mean, with myself, it's, you know, I've got parents that live not too far away, but, you know, the continued con communication with them. And it's, you know, not always just a text message, but picking up the phone. It might be driving by the house and stopping by at a distance saying hello, just to have that human element. Um, with, with my teams at work that we work with, it's, you know, individually picking up the phone, talking, talking to them, seeing how they're doing, not even talking about work, talking about their their life, their family, what their what their kids are doing, what they're experiencing each day, allowing them to, you know, vent and talk about, you know, stuff just outside of work. So, you know, that part is over there, but it's the human element to be there for your teams and be there for your family and be able to, you know, use the technology to engage back and forth is, I think, in my opinion, very important right now. Absolutely. I think you're right. I think we have to find ways to use technology to be more human. Cheval, I'm guessing this is part of your normal. Like um, you've always sort of been a big believer in using technology, but also in, in, in that human element. Right. I think he froze. Well, well, Chevelle's frozen, but you know, I, I do think this is, okay, well, here's the reality. Sometimes technology doesn't work in a direction that you want it to work and you just make the best of it. You know, it was really interesting. I will share, oh, Chevelle's great, back. Yeah. Chevelle, <laughs> I would love for you to jump on this, you know, technology, human aspect, this is something that's sort of your norm, right? But are you yeah. using it differently now? 
Uh, no, not really. It's it's the same for me. It's I mean, it's just uh, you know, it's just connecting with people, you know, and interacting and interacting on a daily basis, and you know, just seeing what's going on. I think I think really it's it's all about you know, like how Bernie said, listening, listen more than speaking, because if you listen more, you get to hear what's going on, and you understand understand that understand that and then you can find a way to help people so i think that's where that's where many have gone wrong and i think i think uh, some businesses are learning getting to learn that especially now you know and and we're starting to see more people um knowing that understanding the importance of connectedness now like like you know we can like uh in in a sense like you know we we we're more connected now around the world like i can listen to a to a show in france in France and in Australia and get to see their perspective. And it's really, it's really enlightening because we would never have, we never would have had that opportunity if we didn't have this. So it's really cool to see how, how much uh, technology has changed, changed us and allow us to connect more. And we actually get to know, know, you know, see how other people live to a degree. Absolutely. I agree. And actually with that, I wanted to bring in this comments. I love it. It's coming from Geta Hare, who's following us on Periscope. And she says, sending cards and letters now is like sending hugs. And I couldn't agree mm -hmm. more. I, I think what I did, what we're trying to do with the family is we're trying to send our uh, you know, grandparents on each side a gift every week. Uh, nothing expensive, but just like something that the, the kids and I come up with. And so last week we sent photo um, calendars out, right? And then this week we're sending out the kids made um, cards. And then I think what we're going to do is we're going to create our own spices to send to each of the grandparents too, um, that we know that they'll enjoy and that's healthy for them. You know, at this age, got to be more mindful of that. But here's our last question. And this, this comes from Cheval too. And how are, how are you going to finish the year strong? What are the best simple tips to keep you uh, thriving? And, um, so I, I would love actually to start with Bernie on this, if we could, and maybe you could, you know, talk to us, how are you going to finish the year strong and sort of, sort of your tips on thriving during this time, Bernie? So that's a great question. And, you know, to finish the year strong, it's, you know, understanding where I am as far as the goals that I set early in the year. And, you know, a lot of that has been sidetracked by, you know, COVID and working from home. So you know, for myself, what is it that I need to do to achieve um, where I want to be? So um, for myself, it's looking for a new position, new opportunities um, where I'm currently at. They've uh, moved the headquarters and a lot of our um, responsibilities and jobs. So for myself, it's reprioritizing, you know, my time during the day, um, not only for myself, but for potentially job search, for other opportunities, for consulting. And also, you know, where does that weigh in with the the family life balance or work life balance to ensure that, you know, I've got that, I've got my current responsibilities with um, the current um, position that I'm at and then when my exit date is. So it's, you know, reaching out to the network, it's networking, it's um, talking to as many people as possible and it's really positioning myself for, you know, the middle part of 2021 to hopefully be in a better position with, uh, you know, professionally and with, with my career. Well, that those are some big goals, and and we're really hoping for you. I mean, I mean, Bernie, we know you were you've been obviously very very successful through the years, and I have no doubt you're going to land just fine. But you're also working on a lot of projects, right? We see that really cool banner behind you, Bernie. You got to talk about that. Let's talk about your tweet chat. Let's talk about your videos. Let's talk about all that. Let's talk, oh, Bernie. All right. So, um, you know, actually, this this it's been a fun time. So, um, the first part of COVID. Uh, relaunched a website of mine called careerbarn.com. And essentially that's a career website. It's free for employers. It's free for job seekers. Um, and really we're listing, you know, the job listings that we find. Companies can come on, post their jobs for free. We've got excellent resume resources. And it's kind of ironic that I'm looking for a job and I have a job website. So a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that I have there, you know, is very relevant. Um, I partnered up with a great individual on LinkedIn, Curtis Thompson for resume writing, resume coaching, you know, I've referred him to so many people and everyone's been very happy with that. Um, you know, that's one aspect of it. I've got, you know, B to the seven, which I do digital and social consulting for, you know, small and medium brands. 
and a lot of this, you know, extends off the experience from the last 20 something years that I've had at Papa John's corporate where I've managed and been a director level, you know, for email programs, content marketing, um, the first social programs. Then also within B to the seven, I do have my own um, um, Twitter chat that is on Fridays at noon Eastern time and it's digital 360 chat. And really where this one's a little bit different is, you know, all the other, a lot of the other chats, you know, you start off with six, seven, eight, nine, questions, you have a topic. My focus is more on the guests themselves because I want to learn more about their career, how they got to where they did, um, advice that they have for others that are starting out. Uh, a lot of the guests that I have are, you know, solopreneurs. And, you know, when they made the jump, what are some of the obstacles that they had? So it's really, you know, taking those social relationships to the next level of, yeah, we might be in the same chat, but I want to know more about these individuals. I want to know more about them personally, more about, you know, what they're doing with their lives, with their careers, and then sharing that with, you know, my communities. So the big thing about, you know, social is, you know, it's, it's being there, but it's also learning more about who you're connected with and learning more about what they do, what makes them tick, what their career is, what they like to do on the side. And that's what a lot of, um, my chat's all about. So that's kind of, you know, some of the stuff that I've been doing here recently over the last, the last, you know, eight months. And then the chat itself has been going on for, gosh, I guess it's two years now. Wow. Congratulations. Well, I know you have a wonderful community and some really wonderful friends there. So, and I want to tell you, everybody just loves you. So thank you, Bernie, for doing all that you do. Um, and thank you so much for being this. You know, Chevelle had to jump off because he had to get to another work meeting, but we appreciate him joining us as well. As always, huge, huge thank you to you, Bernie. Um, and, you know, and, and those of you who are watching, thank you everyone for joining Chevelle, Bernie, and myself today because as we're celebrating Thanksgiving with you, and we certainly hope that you have an amazing Thanksgiving. I'm pretty sure Bernie will because we actually talked turkey earlier today. Um, yes. And you've, Yes, um, yeah, we will be. We will not be having our usual tweet chat next week for obvious reasons because it's Wednesday and it's before Thanksgiving. But we want to invite you back on December second. Okay, December second, we're going to be having our holiday marketing advice from our power panel of Mike. Alton, Stephanie Liu, and Robinson. We hope that you will join us um, because it's going to be 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. We'll definitely share it all over Twitter so you won't be able to miss it. And definitely check out um, Bernie's tweet chat as well. I think you'll love that as well. Huge thank you for all your support and for tuning in. I'll look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. So stay well and goodbye. And thank you so much, Bernie. Thank you. It was great. And thank you for the opportunity. Have a great evening. Have a great evening, everybody. Take care now. Bye-bye.